Okay. Well, we're coming back to R because I think it's unfair to introduce these measures and talk about how, they, how the network might look differently in them and so forth and so on and then not show you how to do it in R. So we're going to do a little module in R to allow you to, to look, hey, how to calculate these things and then we're going to visualize uh, how the network would look looking at these different measures to give you a sense that in a natural network, different people are going to be highlighted using these different measures. And when you're thinking about a visualization strategy, connecting the measure to the process that you think is really going on is super important. So in these earlier ones, I highlighted in degree centrality, but we might think that there are other uh, measures that matter. Okay, so first of all, I'm just gonna go up here because it's good practice. And I'm going to load my packages. I'm actually loading a new package. I'm loading ggplot2 because, um, as I noted in the connectionist slides, not all these measures are great things to visualize with networks. So we're going to do a histogram when we look at uh, the degree distribution to get a general sense of what our degree distribution is in this network. So I'm loading my packages. I'm going to just uh, go through here, I'm loading, I'm importing in my data. I'm just doing these basic steps to make sure I don't trip myself up later. It's a good thing to do. I'm coming down. Remember, I've got to make these uh, funky eye graph objects. So I'm doing that step. And I'm going to go down to where we did our discussion network because I want to start off with a somewhat pretty network before uh, moving into these measures. But we'll do some comparisons with the colleague network and actually I'm going to do this live and potentially massively embarrass myself. Well, here we go. I think it's important to see the process. All right, so we have our discussion networks. I'm removing the self loops. Just a reminder what self loops are. Self loops are um, sort of metaphysical existential loops. So they're the connections we have with ourselves. In some network analyses, that would make sense. But in this case, I, th I think it would be helpful to remove them. So I'm doing that. And OK. I'm importing my sample attributes. The reason why I'm doing that is um, I want to see if there are differences between our researchers and our graduate students in terms of these measures and see if these differences you know, make any kind of sense um, a priori. Of course, in a more in-depth analysis, I'd spend a little bit more time with this data, but I think it's good to do now. So I'm going to check my attributes file just to make sure that everything's sane. And I just want... So we have researcher and grad student, looks good. And we have our source, that looks good. All right. Let's make sure. I'm going, so the first measure we talked about in the connections measures is density. Just a reminder about what density is. Density is the proportion of ties that are connected out of all ties that could possibly be connected. Uh, so higher density means that we have a more connected network. In a social network analysis, I would expect a density range somewhere in 0.2 or a little higher. In other kinds of networks, they can be sparser because density is, correlate, is often correlated in networks with how expensive it is to maintain the tie. So in networks where maintaining a tie costs a fair bit of energy or resources, that we're, I expect a lower density than in networks where the cost of maintaining that tie or having that tie or lower. All right, so I'm going to run this. Ah, and we have 0.4, which is not completely crazy here because uh, this is wave one. And so these people had pre-existing ties. Remember, this network was a discussion network. And it was academics and people coming out of the educational sector meeting together. At this point, the discussion networks would be people that would probably have known from before they actually came to this network. And so we're, we're getting a sense of the pre-existing ties. I would hope over time that this number would go up, or at least if I was um, the NSF, I would hope that this number went up. All right. 
And why don't we compare that to our colleague network? All right, so we had, so I'm going to type this in, going live, all crazy, density, and in this case, colleague. And notice that R is actually populating very helpfully. Um, colleague networks like you, here's the network. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, it makes sense to me. Great. Um, that's particularly important because remember that R is case sensitive. So you know, be sure that what R is telling you is the right thing, but it's a helpful feature. And just in general, if uh, it isn't doing what you like, look at it. Just might be the fact that it might be an upper or lower case letter. So I'm running. Well, oh. Let's see. Oh, you know what? You have to make colleague graph too. Well, that would be why. This is what happens when you go live. Because remember, what's the difference between the graph one and graph two is getting rid of those self loops. I had to do a simplify function. Just a, a little reminder. So I'm coming in here. Colleague graph two. All right, I'm going to make you now. Hopefully, I can calculate your density. So what would your expectation be? Actually, what would the expectation be? It would be based on the question type. So in our discussion uh, network, it was based on a question that said, well, what do you dis who do you discuss research matters with? This network I've been calling the colleague network, all it was was, do you, who do you know? I expect the density to be maybe a little higher in this network. I might be proven wrong. I feel like who do I know is a little less stringent a tie requirement than who do I discuss uh, research with. Though in these settings, it's academics at least, they discuss research with everyone. So, you know. Okay, back to density. All right. Point six. All right, my, my expectation was met. Woohoo! All right, now I want to look at my mean or my average uh, path distance. Okay, what is our average path distance? A reminder from our, the connectionist or the connectionist discussion. So, average path distance is the average number of hops between me and other no, um, other people in the network. So, for instance, if I can um, get to Anyone in the network within two or three ties, that would be, on average, that would be an average of two, right? Larger uh, path distances would suggest that I would expect a uh, less dense network for a higher average path distance, but there are some qualifiers. So let's put in our colleague graph two. This time it should actually be here. And what is our expectation about the shortest path in this comparison? I think, haven't ran it, so I don't know, but I think that the average path distance in the discussion network is going to be higher because, again, if this is a more stringent set of uh, relationships, then I expect a less connected to less dense network. So it probably takes more hops to get all the way around the network on average. So let me, I'm going to calculate the one for our discussion network. And we've got 2.7. So generally it takes three steps to get all the way around. And now we're going to do it for our colleague or who do I know network. 2.5. So yes, this is a slightly more dense network. It takes on average a little, a fewer, um, just slightly less ties to get around the network. If, again, I was the NSF, what would I be hoping for over time? I would be hoping that, uh, particularly in the discussion network, that the average path distance might go down a little bit. That would suggest that we're getting more connections. Um, but I would also want the density to increase, um, not decrease or remain level. And the reason why I would say that is because if the density remains the same, but the average path length decreases, 
that means we're getting a couple of muckety-muck people. We're getting some important, highly connected people, but that doesn't mean that the connections are happening globally overall. And if those high muckety-muck people happen to be in academia or happen to be in education and don't happen to be um, and are concentrating one or the other, that might they might be highly connected, the network might be getting connected, but they might be getting connected only through a couple of people. And if I'm trying to get a denser, more collaborative or collegial relationship, then I, I at least personally would want the density to increase as the average path length decreases, because that would say that uniformly more ties are being made and there's more relationships and therefore more potential resources or collaboration opportunities across the network. So I don't want to look at any one of these measures and make that a uh, sort of criterion for success. I want to look at how these measures uh, link together to tell me a story. All right, so now I'm coming down. And degree distribution. All right, remember what degree distribution is? How probable is that I'll be connected to, say, by um, one connection versus being connected by five or six or something like that? I'm going to calculate that for my discussion network. You're seeing two statements. First, I'm just getting this out of um, iGraph. And then I'm going to make this into a data structure that I actually want to export. So the, why is this important? Well, in the earlier ones, they were just point numbers. I could, I could have it exported out to a graph, or out to a data um, function uh, so that I could read it into a CSV or do something else with it. But I, you know, I basically could write it down too. It's not a big deal. But now we're beginning to look at features that are going to be um, connected potentially to nodes or a greater um, range of features. So now I want a exportable vector or exportable list that I can analyze maybe potentially somewhere else. So how do I get that out of R? I'm first calculating iGraph and then I'm making it into a data object that I can manipulate and export out to a CSV if I want to use that later. And I'm telling you this because I have had numerous instances where it's like, oh, I see it in R, but how do I move it to somewhere else? How do I work with this? You know, like it's great that it's on the R console, but uh, how is that helping me uh, when I want to run some analyses on it? And particularly if I have colleagues and they don't work in R. All right, so I'm just doing, moving these and turning this into something I want. And I'm going to turn this into a data frame. So we're going to get a sense of the numbers first, and then we're going to do a little histogram to get an idea. And I called this discussion degree uh, distribution, or dis. I'm opening it up. It doesn't look crazy. Remember, I can sort it in here. So lots of zeros. And my highest value uh, looks like 0.11. Why is it a 0.11? Because it's been um, standardized across the graph. And so I'm not seeing it as raw counts here, which is why it's 0.11. Um, as, and remember, these are distributions. So this is saying, well, I have um, an 11% chance of this number versus of, of five or seven percent chance of that number. So that's the other reason it has to be standardized into a probability distribution from zero to one. So now let's make this into a histogram. And that would be, I guess, one reason why that was confusing, just to bring that up, is that degree distribution is, remember, probabilities, but it might also be useful just to look at the raw counts of debris, degrees and go, oh, well, who, the most connected person, you know, how much is that versus the least connected person, just as a um, just as a descriptive statistic, and I often do that. So that is sort of why, like, well, why is I'm seeing these crazy numbers? Oh yeah, right. Okay, so I have my little histogram. Remember, I can make this big, so I'm going to zoom this, zoom in, and then I've got to look at it in R on my little second screen because it's R. Not shockingly, we see that 0.1 um, distribution. Well, that 0.1 would be associated with a degree count of, I think, roughly around five or something like that, but we could look at the mean. But we're getting a general sense. This looks, this looks fairly normal. We have lots of things, that, like really crazy things, like uh, 200 friends, which would mean that you were friends with everyone in this data set before you ever came up, have a zero probability. And things like having five friends has something like 11%, because the differences between having five, six, seven, eight aren't all that different 
when it comes to the probability of these ties. Mm -hmm.